if ever before in my life as a minister have I ever come to the pulpit and knew that I had God's Word before me, today's the day. I know that for a number of reasons. The first reason I know that is how it came to me. I was at home the other day, and raining, and I was by myself. And I said, Lord, I don't want to go to church this Sunday and just preach. I want to come to church and know that I've got a word from you. I shared with the prayer team this morning, we preachers often get educated about how to make a sermon or build a sermon or prepare a sermon. And I'm not very good at that. I just want God to tell you what God told me. I want to share with you what the Lord shared with me. And if that's not sufficient, then we're not going to make it. I was sitting at the house and I said, Lord, I I don't want to just preach. I, I need a word from you. And I didn't hardly get that out of my mouth before the Lord said, you preach what I tell you to preach, and here it is. And in about two minutes, I got about two hours worth of preaching. Don't let that scare you. I'm not going to preach for two hours. The second reason I know that is that having received the Word, not only I but my family came under an attack. There are spirits out there whose names are revenge, retaliation, and retribution. Those three spirits work together to keep you from doing what God says do. Any of you that have ever attempted to do anything that God told you to do and you knew you had a word from God to do what God said do, you know what I'm talking about. With great effort this morning, I've come and tried to prepare myself to preach. I want to begin this message by beginning it like an Old Testament prophet. (coughs) <coughs> the Old Testament prophets would come and say, Thus saith the Lord. And so as you receive this message this morning, please do not receive this from me, but from the Lord. As I was at home the other day, and I asked the Lord to give me a word, He began to give me a word, He gave me two passages of Scripture, and He said, There will be two judgments. There will be two judgments. The first judgment you will find in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Turn there with me. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. This is the judgment of what is known as the Bema seat. It is the judgment of the redeemed. It is the judgment of those of us (coughs) <coughs> who know the Lord. I'm reading in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10. The Word of God says, For we must all, how many? How many? All appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body According to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Now, look at me for a moment. (coughs) This judgment seat, the word seat here comes from the Greek word bima. This word bima, the best way I can describe it, the Greeks and the Romans, you would be very familiar with the Olympics. When they would have their games, when they would have... Uh, Brother Lynn, they'd have their races. The, The one who won the race would stand on a platform just like they do in the Olympics. And the judge would come up and put a, a medal or a crown on that, uh, on that runner or that uh, athlete's head who had won the race and he would be crowned and he would receive his reward. That was called the Bema seat. Not only that, But that bema was where the judge stood. And I'm here to tell you that the Word of God says that Jesus will come and He will judge His people. 
But listen to me. I've got good news this morning. For those of you who stand in the judgment of the Bema, the Apostle Paul said in Romans 8, chapter 1, There is therefore no more condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. I began to try to study and, and research, and, and I want to tell you, it just wouldn't hardly work. And I, and I didn't, I, the normal sources that I'd go to to try to find a word, I couldn't do it. And I went up, and as I do most Monday mornings, and I, I go and stir up the preacher at First Baptist Ravel and try to mess up his week. And so I went up there to stir him up, and I was telling him what God had laid on my heart to preach and, and just share with him. And he said, hold up, i got something you need to read. And he reached over and picked up a book about this thick and about that tall, and it was uh, Miller J. Erickson, which is a wonderful conservative uh, writer. He said, you need to read this. And I read in that book, and that book said that Miller J. Erickson said, now I'm not talking about the Word of God, I'm telling you what a man said. A man said, that those of us who were judged would stand before the righteous judge in the beam of seat to receive our rewards and our condemnation for those. But when the sins would be revealed, they were revealed as pardoned and forgiven. I thank you this morning, Lord, that I don't stand in condemnation. I thank you this morning that I don't stand in judgment for those things. But I did what John said do. I went back to the cross and I said, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. And I was forgiven and pardoned. He said, I didn't say it. He said that those that come to him, that he would forgive them and cleanse them of all unrighteousness. So I asked the question of the Lord. I said, Lord, who shall stand at these judgments? And the Lord said, and I quote, My people will not stand in the latter judgment. And I said, Lord, what is the latter judgment? And the Lord took me to Revelation. Turn with me back to the book of Revelation. Now hold your place in, in 2 Corinthians, but we're going to come back there to it in a moment. He said, my people will, st- will not stand in the latter judgment. And so he took me to Revelation chapter 20 and verse 11, and I read God's Word. John the Revelator. How many of y'all know that John was exiled to the Isle of Patmos? They had tried to burn him in oil. They took boil and oil and they put old John in there, but he wouldn't boil. Neither would he burn. He just stood there and kept preaching. And they got, they got exasperated. And the king said, get him out of there! Because he was making a mockery of his destruction. And they pulled him out of the boil and all. And the king said, send him to Patmos. Now, Patmos didn't have any wildlife. Patmos didn't have any grass. It was just a rocky outcropping of an island. But guess what happened? Old John got out of the hole and all went over to the Isle of Patmos, and God told him about the book of Revelation, which I'm about to read. John said, listen to what the Word of God said, I saw a great white throne in him that sat upon it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, Stand before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. Death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. For whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now, ladies and gentlemen, well, thus saith the Lord, there will be two judgments. One judgment will be the beam of seat for those of us who know the Lord Jesus Christ, who've been born again, who've had our sins cleansed, who've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, who've come to Jesus Christ in open repentance and faith and have put our trust and faith in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I do not want to make a mockery of being a Baptist. I don't want to be a mockery of the church. But you listen to me. Are you listening this morning? Somebody say amen up in the house. Try it again. Say amen. Amen. 
I'm here to tell you, you're not saved because your works. You're not saved because you quit doing some stuff and start doing some other stuff. You're not saved because you act right or do right or go right. You're not saved because you go on a mission trip. You're not saved. But by one thing, there was a time and a place and a moment where you confessed your sins and trusted in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for repentance and faith will bring you to salvation. Are we all okay up in the house? I'm here to tell you, when the Spirit said there'll be judge, two judgments, I said, Lord, who will stand in these judgments? And he said, my people will not stand in the latter judgment, but they will stand before the Bema. And I said, Lord, tell me about the Bema. He said, that's a judgment of my people. Now, I want you to tune me in now for a moment. The second question, I said, Lord, does anything can be done about it? And he said, oh, yeah. First of all, you need to decide what judgment you're going to stand in. The Word of God says today is the day of salvation. That's not next week or I'll come back on Sunday night. A rock will fall on your head. A truck run over and kill you. What are you waiting on? I'm trying to ask you a question in the morning. Do you know? Do you know that you know that you know that you know that you've been born again? Can you show me a place? Can you tell me an event? Can you show me by, by a, a place where you came to know the Lord Jesus Christ? Oh, I've been going to church since I was a kid. I could care less about your church attendance. Oh, I, you ought to go to church. I hope you go to church. I want to fill this place up with people going to church, but that's not important. What's important is you can look back in time of your life and go to a spot and say, that's where the transaction of heaven took place. Do you know you say? Larry Cox, are you saved this morning? Where were you saved? Old church building. Rocky, are you saved this morning? Where were you saved, Rocky? Are you sure? Somebody else. Danny, where were you saved? Warsaw, are you sure? Where were you say? In the old church. Where were you say? Who's whose house? James Pepper house. house across the lake. Right here. One of these days, I'm gonna save up a bunch of folks. We're gonna go down there and pay them a dollar and go down there and baptize. Is the boat launch still a dollar? Is it two? Two dollars? Who'll give me two dollars to go down there and baptize? We'll put up the money. Let me say, Richie, t- tell me something, son. Lone Cedar Baptist Church. <laughs> Donna says you need it. <laughs> Are you listening to me, folks? Let me bring you back. When I asked the Lord who will stand in these judgments, he said, my people will not stand in the latter judgment, but my people will stand it to be, mis- be judged. Where are you going to be judged at? Which judgment are you going to stand in? We're going to stand in one of them. And you're the one that's got the deciding vote, not me. That's between you and God. I am so sick of the preaching I'm hearing these days. I am so sick of it. It, 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 ain't, it ain't got enough. It ain't got as much meat in it as cat food. It's shallow, shallow, shallow preaching. We need to get back to the blood. We need to get back to the cross. We need to get back to sin and preaching against it and people repenting. I said, Lord, can we make a difference? Is there anything we can do about it? First thing I heard from God is the people need to decide which judgment they're going to stand in. Second question that I needed to be answered. Is there anything that I can do about what will happen at the Bema? I know I'm saved. I got that settled. But let me tell y'all something. Listen to me. I know y'all will be surprised with this. There's not but two people in this building won't be surprised by that. But I ain't worth a nickel. I ain't no good. In my flesh, I'm rotten. Just me as a human being, I am the worst of the worst. I thought I'd get at least 
one or two amens out of that. But let me tell you something. Listen to me. I can go over there to that book of John, and John tells me that if I'll confess my sins, that He, He, Him, God Almighty, is faithful to forgive me. You know what happens when God forgives sin? He takes it and shoves it away from me as far as the east is from the west. I don't want to stand at the beam of seat with a lot of trash and garbage. But you listen to me. Paul's already taken care of my sin unto death. Paul's already taken care of my sin because when I stand at the beam of sea, all my sins will be revealed as pardon. I ask the question, Lord, what can I do? What can my people... And, I, and I'm... I'm talking about you. What can you do? Somebody answer the weather. That's a weather bulletin. I know we got one. It, by the way, it's raining. <laughs> hey, just call them back. Tell them we know. It just give me longer to preach. Y'all don't want to go out and rain no way, do you? I ask the Lord. Now, now here, here's where the rubber meets the road. Are you, I want you to hear me. Hear me. Hear me. Thus saith the Lord. If we're going to accomplish what God wants us to accomplish, if we're going to have a closer walk with the Lord Jesus Christ, if you and I are going to do what we need to do as children of God, the first place for us to start is dealing with ourselves at the altars. I don't want to show up at the beam of seat clothed in filthy rags. Danny, I remember years ago we were down in the piney woods preaching and me and you and Gary and I don't know who else was there. Daryl, you might have been there. We were in a in kind of a Sunday school slash little auditorium off to the side of the pulpit. And when you sat, you were looking through a doorway at the pulpit. You couldn't even see the people. And I remember the wind began to blow and the pine trees began to lean over. And, and all of a sudden, the Spirit of God blew into that church just like a wind. And I don't know what I had intended on preaching, but God took me, and I began to preach about putting on them white robes. I still get chill bumps when I think about walking out of that old church that night and the stars on dress parade to receive a saint of God dressed in robes of white. I don't want to stand with my gown soiled and dirty before thrice holy God. The Bible says that every man will give an account for, in it for those things that's done in my body and in my flesh. This old wretched man that I am, I will stand before a holy God and I'll give him a shameful account, but he will say, pardon my brother, Pardon my child, and when I stand to receive my crown, he'll put a robe of right white on my shoulders and a ring on my hand. And I'm telling you today, we need to make up our minds how we want to stand before God. There's some things I don't even want to take to my grave, let alone take to my judgment. Did you hear what I said? You say, well, what do you mean by that, Brother Joe? What, let me tell you what the Word of God says. You don't want to know what I say. Let me tell you what God says. The Word of God says, it is appointed unto man once to die, and then the judgment. How many of y'all know when you're going to die? If you know when you're going to die, stand up and tell us. You don't have a clue, neither do I. When they had all that heart surgery they'd done on me, I came out from over there and told Gary, 
I said, well, at least now I know what I'll die of. Now I've decided I ain't dying. Well, that'll be something else kills me. I don't know. A buzzard may light on me and choke me to death. I don't know what's going to happen. Well, let me tell you what I have decided. I have decided to follow Jesus. I ain't interested in what programs are going to be put out. I'm not interested in, in the progress and the programs and the plans. I'm interested in thus saith the Lord. What can we do about the judgments? Repentance. I don't know about you, but I know I'm saved. I got that settled, I'm secure. but I'm still a sinner. And I do and I say and I act in ways that are inconsistent with what I believe. And there are some of you right now sitting in this church that are bearing a burden that you don't have to bear. Millard Erickson, the guy that I said wrote the book, Christian Theology, when he used the word pardon, that doesn't mean innocent. Do you get that? Do you get that? You know, in, 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 in our system of government, when a when a governor goes out, he, he has the right to pardon folks. And did you know that when a president leaves office, he has the right to pardon folks? I don't make them innocent. I just let them go free. What that does is it lets them go free. And what I'm trying to tell you this morning, that if you're here and you've got something on you and in you and that's hounded you and that's burdened you, that's that's been a part of who you are and you're tired of it. You come to these altars this morning and say, God, have mercy and have it pardoned. And you don't have to stand before God with that. We had a pretty lively discussion in here Wednesday night. I shared a little bit of it. Didn't want to mess up what God was doing in a sermon. But the question was, are there rewards in heaven? I, I think so. I, I'm quite certain the Bible teaches that when we stand at the Bema seat, the Bible says we will receive rewards we will receive our judgment and rewards and all of that. But the real question was, are there judgments of hell? Um, I, I don't know how to explain it. Is one corner hotter <laughs> than another? <laughs> Is one place darker than another? I, you know, I don't know that. But I, I did a little research, and, 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 and I'm not preaching this. I'm just sharing what I what I learned, and, and you can do with it whatever you want to. Again, Erickson said that there was no doubt that there would be rewards in heaven. But he also thought that there'd be greater degrees of judgment in hell. Because if you go over there and look, you know, it talks about the judgments that are in Revelation and all of that. But here's my point. I don't want to go to hell at all. I don't want to go to the good spot in hell. Right? I mean, if there's a less hot place in hell, I don't want to be there. You okay, Mary Moss? <laughs> you thought that's funny. I mean, I don't, I don't know how you figure all that out. But eternal fire is eternal fire. And one of my more brilliant people said, I don't care if you burn me with a match or a blowtorch, it's still burnt. 
Now, that's Madison Parish theology, but I thought it was pretty sound. So here's what we're going to do with this message this morning. You have a decision to make. And I'm not going to let you out of here without making it. You're going to make it one way or the other. You're going to make this decision today. You say, I don't have to make a decision. Yeah, you do. Today you do. Because in Thessalonians, the Bible says, those that have heard the truth and believed the lie will be damned. So what I'm trying to tell you is, today's the day. Today's the day. Jesus Christ came and lived a sinless, perfect life, and he shed his blood on Calvary to atone for your sins. And whosoever will call upon his name will be saved. That's the gospel. Receive it or reject it. Your choice. So today I'm offering you an invitation. The invitation is if you can't go back to a place and time, an event where you got saved, I'm offering you this opportunity to come this very morning and say, Brother Joe, I don't have this thing settled. I'm not sure whether I'm lost or saved. I don't know what's up with me, but I want to settle it today. I want to know that when I leave this church today and walk outside with both the lightning hits me, I'm going to heaven. Okay? Everybody good? Look at Brother Joe. You got it? If you are not settled, sure, got it, I know, then today's your day. Number two, whatever our future holds here at Crockett Point, it's in your heart. Did you get what I just said? Did you hear me? Whatever the future is at this church, it's in your heart. You say, well, what are you trying to say, Brother Joe? I don't want to stand at the beam of seat of Christ and be rendered a bunch of judgment but for junk I did that I could have repented of and got straight with God and got cleaned up and, and, and missed all that judgment. I can leave that sin at the foot of the cross. I can leave them at an altar and say, God, I know I'm saved, but I've got some trash in my life that I want gone, and I'm just here to tell you, Lord, I ain't man enough, woman enough. I can't do it by myself. This thing's bigger than I am. I want to lay it at your feet. And as a sinner, let me say it this way, as a sinning saint, I want to lay my flesh and my sin at the altar today. The altars do not belong to this church. They belong to the Lord. Whatever your need is today, I can assure you God can meet it. He's got the title of being God. Ain't, pardon my grammar. There ain't nothing He can't do. He'll save you or He'll cleanse you. What do you need Him to do in your life today? You're looking for a church family. We want to invite you to be a part here. I could care less. The church cares less where you come from and what your past is. We want to be able to minister to you and you to us so our church doors are open. Richie, you and the guys, come. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed all over the auditorium. No one's looking around. <coughs> no one's looking around. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. While the guys are coming, I want to ask you a question. Is there anybody here in the building that would say, Brother Joe, I just am not sure I'm not really settled on whether or not I'm saved. You may know already and say, Brother Joe, I'm lost. I know I'm lost. <coughs> I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not coming to your house this evening. I'm not walking back there where you're at. I'm not going to call you out. It's between you and God. But I do want to have the privilege of prayer for you. So if you're here today and you can say, Brother Joe, I'm not sure I've got it settled but I want to settle it today. I want to leave today knowing that I'm a child of God. Would you just lift your hand up right now?
God bless you, sir. Any more? God bless you. Lift that hand up one more time, baby. God bless you, girl. Any more? Any more? How many of you could say, Brother Joe, I know I'm saved, but Brother Joe, there's some trash in my life that I'd like to put at the cross and leave it there. I don't want to pick it back up. I want to leave it at the foot of the cross. How many of you here today are Christians could say that today? Brother Joe, it's just some things I need to deal with. Would you lift your hand? God bless, God bless, God bless, God bless, God bless. Hands everywhere. For those of you that have been visiting with us, you want to be a part, today's your day. Just come and say, Brother Joe, I want to be a part. We'll gladly receive you. Prayerfully, reverently, while the guys sing, the altars are open. If you're one of those people that lifted your hand, you want to be saved, you just come to me and say, Brother Joe, I want to be saved. And if you're one of those Christians that lifted your hand and said, Brother Joe, just some trash in my life. I need to get straight with God. Then these altars are open. Reverently, quietly, let's stand. You come right now. What can what?